Welcome everybody to the first session in the Getting Started with Splunk mini series. We are very happy to have you here today and we hope that you will find the content we have prepared for you throughout this series insightful and that you'll leave feeling like you've learned something that you can apply going forward. First, before we get started, I do have to let everyone know that we have these forward looking statements. In a nutshell, this says that any statements that may be made by anyone of the Splunk team today, to include myself, that may be a forward looking regarding such things like product, technologies, etc. These are only based on current expectations and are subject to change. So just be mindful of that. And I am your host. My name is Justin Collins. I am based out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I love the warm weather. Um, prior to joining Splunk slash Cisco, I was in the, the Navy. And I and some of the things that I love to do, I, I love spending time with the love of my life, my girlfriend. Currently, we're embarking on a journey to learn Spanish together. Super fun, about 45 days in the Duolingo. It's all we talk about around the house. And I love to surf especially when there's waves. Not too many in Fort Lauderdale, but if I venture out uh, a little bit, I can find some. That's a little bit about myself. And let's get into the agenda for today, the series agenda. Session one is going to be the importance of machine data. And since it's the first of five sessions in this series, I wanna just take a minute here to go over what each session will be about. So we, we talked about session one, and then session two is going to be Splunk platform and architecture. Splunk three is going to be intro to SPL, search processing language. Session four is going to be about Splunk knowledge objects. Session five is going to be your popular SPL commands. And then of course, we're gonna include Splunk resources. So let's jump into session one. What are we going to have within the session? We're going to go over what is machine data and why do we care? We're going to go over how to leverage machine data. We're going to go over different use cases for your machine data and, and all the logs that you're generating. And then we'll, we'll talk about a real customer story. Data is your competitive advantage. As we all probably have realized by now, we are living in the data age and it has only just begun. Data is no longer a record of what happens. These days, data makes things happen. But how does that affect any of us? Well, let's go ahead. Let's discuss a few examples. Let's, let's jump into, uh, let's put ourselves in the lens of healthcare and life sciences. Data is improving patient outcomes by enabling new personalized treatment approaches providing new potential cures and innovative drugs. In communications, data is amplifying the customer experience to support exponentially more devices on 5G and service expectations for providers. In media, data is transforming the way that, that we engage with customers. They're understanding viewer interests and shape content they create. In public sector, data is enabling agencies to make more confident decisions and take decisive actions quicker than ever before on initiatives like, say, city planning and contingency plans. In the man manufacturing department, data is transforming operational efficiency with connective devices like robots, holographics, 3D printers to quickly predict any maintenance or failures before they happen. And then in retail, data is redesigning customer experiences, enhancing visibility across digital channels and improving operational efficiency. So as you may realize, every company needs to bring data to everything because their business depends on it. But why is this so hard for many organizations? The reason is simple. Traditional data strategies and platforms are not prepared for the current data age. And without the right data strategy and platform, these rapid transformations can add massive complexity to organizations and hinder them from turning data into action. I wanna give you an example. Organizations are now spending billions of dollars and countless human hours to try and lap the, uh, 
and I'm sorry, to try and tap the value of this data to solve critical business problems. They've created dat data lakes, integrating, working across countless legacy systems and fragmented cloud services that create massive data volumes, while also navigating the complex web of tools designed to aggregate, monitor, and analyze this data for specific needs across the organization. And now it's even harder than before to detect where that problem actually lies as the move to cloud poses great complexities with services now coming from all different places. Beforehand, we would just have everything that was in our workshop, but now that we're grabbing data from cloud, from different services, it's getting harder and harder to track. So you, you have to lift and shift your existing apps to the cloud, refactor applications and build new cloud native apps that leverage modern cloud technologies. And they all must talk to each other. So the solution that's been offered to most of us is that you can structure your way out of the problem. But even with a massive budget, integration tools, business process maps, and a team of data or database experts, it's increasingly difficult to make headway and keep up with all the data that's coming in. These solutions weren't built for the always on, always connected, need it now world of today. This is why so many of the promises of big data just has not been realized. And guess what? That's where Splunk comes in. The best solution to our problem is a platform that allows us to ingest and monitor all of our environment data so that we can act on any events quickly and resolve them before they escalate. So you may ask yourself, how can Splunk be useful here? Well, Splunk is focused on giving you end-to-end -end visibility across all your data. With Splunk, there is no data sampling or blind spots. Only Splunk enables you to see across any data source at any scale in near real time. But you need more than just complete visibility. You need to be able to act quickly on threats, performance issues, or any other obstacles with human support or increasingly artificial intelligence. So luckily with Splunk, the same flat platform that keeps your system secure and resilient can be extended to solve for a variety of custom use cases. Let's go over a little bit of what machine data looks like and how, you know, just looking at it from, from you know, a, a quick second, you can see there's a lot compacted in one log that you may be ingesting. So if we've seen so far, machine data may look complex, but is incredibly valuable. What we're gonna do is take a closer look at a few use cases we could leverage it for. So what you see on your screen, this is a sample of the event. This is specifically an Apache web server log, and this is from an online web store. We're going to use this raw event to illustrate a few different ways we can analyze this data for different use cases. So just at a glance, right, we can see HTTP shop .com product screen. So that's where we're living within this sample data log. And let's break it down a little bit. Okay. So first, let's just take a simple use case for this event. Highlighted on the slide are some examples of fields relevant to a marketing use case. So some of the components we can extract from this one log, right? We can extract the IP address of our client. We can also extract the product that they viewed, which was a Belkin Bluetooth hands-free device. And you know, what language are they viewing this in? It was set to French. Our, market, our marketing team could leverage this information to show more relevant products to this customer specifically. Okay, let's move over to uh, the same sample data set, but let's look at a DevOps use case. So just as we did in the previous marketing example, we've highlighted a few fields that could be useful, useful to our marketing team, but now we're gonna look at our development team. We can see here that the customer visiting our website was using a Samsung device running Android 2, uh, Android 12.00, and the DevOps team could use this type of information to determine the most popular platforms and devices used by people visiting our web app. Ultimately, this could help them make decisions about future updates and patches to our website, among other things. 
For this next example, we'll look at some fields that might be relevant to an IT operations team. Again, this is all coming from the same raw event we've been looking at. In this case, we see the IP of the web server that serviced the requests, the IP of our client, the page that they viewed, and a session ID that can help us track this user's activity through our website. Additionally, we can see that the user was using Mozilla 5.0 web browser and that this website interaction generated a 503 HTTP status code, okay? And, and, and for those in the chat that, that know or that do not know, this can indicate a request that something went wrong, a 503 HTTP status code. This is bad, something went wrong with this request. So now our IT operations team can use information like this to identify issues and remediate them before they escalate. And all of these different use cases I have just showed you is what we, what we, what we call data recycling. So we take all of this data from, from, from one log and are able to leverage all these different departments by ingesting that one log and finding value within all these different teams and departments within one organization. That is called data recycling. Let's talk about a real customer story, specifically Papa John's, right? We all love a nice slice of pizza. Papa John satisfies customers' cravings for an exceptional digital experience. Technology is threaded through every aspect of Papa John's operations from the supply chain and back office to its more than 5,500 stores in all e-commerce and partner channels. This hybrid environment presents a wealth of efficiencies and new customer touch points, but also creates more opportunity for things to go wrong, of course, especially when all these systems must work together seamlessly to get customers their pizzas, their sides, and of course their desserts. On the security side, Papa John's must safeguard systems and protect data for all of its more than 26 million Papa John's reward members, myself included. With the Splunk platforms, teams have a centralized insight and the ability to reuse the same data set for multiple purposes across security and operations. And on the prefer performance sides, customer ex expect blistering speed. We no longer want to wait as a customer. So they just want a few seconds of latency can mean a customer abandons and orders elsewhere. If we're getting hung up on the app, we might just jump to another delivery service. While this, while this pace of innovation and scale of operations could create vulnerabilities in Papa John's system, the Splunk platform helps the team find these little problems and fix issues fast. The Splunk platform is instrumental in their ability to innovate because it gives them more confidence to release things faster. I wanted to thank you all for being here. This concludes session one. So please return for session two, where we'll discuss the Splunk, Splunk platform in more detail. And thank you all for your time. And I hope you have a wonderful day and rest of the week.